Jeffrey A. Moore is an American organizational theorist, management consultant, and author. He developed the Market Development Lifecycle Model, also called Moore's Lifecycle. The model review is based on the article Darwin and the Demon, Innovation Within Established Enterprises, published in the Harvard Business Review, July-August 2004. The model provides an insight into innovating within established enterprises. The title Darwin and the Demon refers to the fact that leaders often have a hard time overcoming the resistance to constant innovation. Moreover, innovation comes in products, processes, marketing, business models and more. What kind of innovation you should pursue depends on where your product is placed in the life cycle. Moore's model contains different stages in the market life cycle. You have to align your innovation with each of these stages. To have a successful innovation in the different stages, you must also choose the right leader and sponsor for the innovation project. You have to get in front of this Darwinian process and leave the demon of inertia against innovation behind you. Let us review the construction of the model. Moore's life cycle consists of two dimensions. On the horizontal x-axis, we find time going from left to right, and on the vertical y-axis is revenue growth going from bottom to top. The higher, the more revenue. Moore's model is divided into three main phases on the horizontal timeline. The first phase is about emerging markets, getting the acceptance of a new product. In the second main phase, the customers and users know the products and are generally satisfied. And in the third main phase, the customers are looking for alternatives. Each main phase consists of individual stages and various forms of innovation. We will review these stages and connect them with the different innovation forms and the appropriate leadership style. The first phase consists of four stages. These are Stage 1, the early market, Stage 2, the chasm, Stage 3, the bowling alley, and stage four, the tornado. The second phase consists of two stages. These are stage five, the early main street, and stage six, the mature main street. The third and last phase consists of three stages. These are stage seven, the declining Main Street, Stage 8, the Fault Line, and finally, Stage 9, the End of Life. All nine stages in the life cycle are reviewed in the following sections. Stage 1, the Early Market. When a new technology is introduced, it attracts the attention of early adopters, enthusiasts who see it as cool, and visionaries who see it as potentially disruptive. Pragmatic buyers are curious, but make no commitments. The press, fascinated, writes glowing articles describing the new technology as the next big thing. Stage 2. The Chasm the technology is caught betwixt and between. Visionaries are no longer making big bets on it because it has been in the marketplace for some time and has lost its novelty. But its acceptance isn't widespread enough to convince pragmatists that it would be a safe purchase. Adoption is stalled, and typically the only way to move forward is to target a niche market that suffers a nasty problem for which the technology is the sole solution. In such a market, the pragmatists in pain 
are the only customers motivated to help the new technology cross the chasm. There are lots of examples of new technologies and products that never pass the chasm. They got their 15 minutes of fame, and none of us can remember them today. Stage 3. The Bowling Alley the technology is gaining acceptance among pragmatists in one or more niche markets where it provides a solution to a nasty problem. When a niche adopts the technology, adjacent niche markets become willing to accept the technology, hence the bowling pin metaphor. Within each niche, the technology builds a loyal following and attracts partners who see a market in the making. Outside the niches, it is still largely unknown. Stage 4. The Tornado The technology has passed the test of usefulness and is now perceived as necessary and standard for many applications. All pragmatists hanging back from committing are rushing into the market to ensure they don't get left behind. Customers of many types from many fields are making their first purchases of the technology, and revenues are growing at double or even triple digit rates. Competition is fierce, with investors bidding up the stock of every company that participate in the category. Stage 5. The Early Main Street The era of hypergrowth has subsided, but the category is still growing nicely. The first wave of consolidation results in a market share pecking order that is unlikely to change in a long time. Even the companies with small market shares are typically performing well. Customers are focused on seeing systematic improvements in the offering and reward each with an uptick in purchasing. New versions of mobile phones are a classic example of this phenomenon. Stage 6. The Mature Main Street Category growth has flattened, and commoditization is increasing. Market leaders are creating top-line growth by streamlining organically and through mergers and acquisitions. The big players buy the smaller ones. Customers now take the category for granted, and the press no longer writes about it. On the plus side, however, there are no new technologies on the horizon, so the market risk is very low. Stage 7. The Declining Main Street The category has become rigid or fixed in attitude or position, and the market dominators are unresponsive to customer needs. Customers are actively looking for relief, a development that is attracting entrepreneurs. The next generation technologies are on the horizon, although none has gone through the tornado. The market is ripe for some form of disruption, either through an obsoleting technology or a radical innovation business model. Electric cars with Tesla at the forefront started that development in the automobile industry. Stage 8. The Fault Line Technology obsolescence has struck like an earthquake, exposing the fault line between what the company sells and what the market now desires. The fault line is an indication that the production of the product cannot be saved. There is no market anymore. The next generation tornado is wreaking havoc on the installed bases of the established vendors. The classic example is Blockbuster, which in physical stores rented out movies and games in the 80s, 90s and in the first decade of the 21st century. They filed for bankruptcy in 2010 when the Netflix online business concept outcompeted their business model. The end of life. There is no path forward for companies that produce obsolete technology. The only question is, how much money existing customers are willing to spend on the category before it vanishes altogether. Examples of technologies or products you can see in technical museums or historical movies from different decades. The process of aligning innovation with the life cycle 
and the corresponding leadership style are reviewed in the following section. In the review of the individual stages, there are ongoing examples of products and services. The products and services mentioned are today textbook classics in the world of innovation. Stage 1. The Early Market Disruptive innovation is the aligning innovation type in the model. Innovation gets a great deal of attention, particularly in the press, because markets appear as if from nowhere, creating massive new sources of wealth. It tends to have its roots in technological discontinuities, such as the one that enabled Motorola's rise to prominence with the first generation of cell phones, or in fast-spreading fads like the collector card game Pokemon. In this stage, the right team leader is an entrepreneur type, and ideally, the executive team sponsor is the general manager. The entrepreneur type has the wildness to produce something new. On the other hand, the general manager has the power to channel resources to the new product or technology and remove resistance from the existing organization. Stage 2 The Chasm there is no aligning innovation type in the model. The crucial question at this stage is, is the innovation in the previous stage strong enough to attract pragmatic customers directly, or is it necessary to find customer segments with special needs or pains in the next stage? Stage 3. The Bowling Alley Application innovation is the aligning innovation type. The application innovation takes existing technologies into new markets to serve new purposes, such as when Tandem took computers into the banking market to create ATMs, or when OnStar took global positioning systems into the automobile market for roadside assistance. The right team leader is a marketing manager in this stage, and the ideal sponsor is still the general manager. The marketing manager can find the market segment that has a great need or pain that has to be solved. The general manager has the necessary power to change procedures and the organizational structure to optimize the handling of the new customer segments. Stage 4. The Tornado Product innovation is the aligning innovation type. Product innovation takes established offerings in established markets to the next level. The focus can be on performance improvements, as with Titleist Pro 6 golf balls, cost reduction, as with HP inkjet printers, usability improvements, as with Palm handhelds, or any other product enhancement. In this stage, the right team leader is an engineering manager, and the ideal sponsor is still the general manager. The engineering manager can manage the technical side of the innovation. The general manager can change procedures and the organizational structure to optimize the changes in production and the support functions. Stage 5. The Early Main Street Process innovation is the aligning innovation type. The process innovation makes processes for established offerings in established markets more effective or efficient. Examples include Dell's streamlining of its PC supply chain and order fulfillment systems, and Walmart's refinement of vendor-managed inventory processes. In this stage, the right team leader is an operations manager, and the ideal sponsor is the vice president for operations. The operations manager can streamline the value chain of the existing production of the company. The vice president for operations has enough power to support these optimizations. Stage 6. The Mature Main Street In the model, this stage is also called the indefinitely elastic middle period. In terms of innovation, two types of innovation are aligned with this stage. 
These are the experiential innovation and the marketing innovation. The order in which the two types of innovation are to be used is not clear from the model. Moreover, since we do not know the length of the stage, we may use the two types of innovation several times in random order. Experiential innovation makes superficial modifications that improve customers' experience of established products or processes. These can take the form of delighters like You've Got Mail, satisfiers like Superior Line Management at Disneyland, or reassurers like Package Tracking from FedEx. The right team leader is a customer service manager, and the ideal sponsor is the vice president for marketing. The customer service manager can find the superficial modifications that make the existing product or service more appealing than the competitors. The vice president for marketing has enough power to support the superficial modifications that improve the customer's experience. Marketing innovation improves customer touching processes. These can take the form of viral marketing, like the Lord of the Rings movie trilogy, use of the web and trailers. Consumer transactions like Amazon's e-commerce mechanisms or online auctions as used by eBay. The right team leader is a marketing manager and the ideal sponsor is still the vice president for marketing. The marketing manager can find unique selling points that improve the customer touching processes. The Vice President for Marketing has enough power to support the improvement of the customer touching processes. Stage 7. The Declining Main Street In terms of innovation, two types of innovation are aligned with this stage. These are the Business Model Innovation and the Structural Innovation. Business Model Innovation reframes an established value proposition to the customer or a company's established role in the value chain, or both. Examples include chestnuts like Gillette's move from razors to razor blades, IBM's shift to on-demand computing, and Apple's expansion into consumer retailing. The right team leader is the general manager, and the ideal sponsor is the CEO. The general manager can design a new business model that involves the entire organization. The CEO can force the other stakeholders in the organization to implement the new business model. Structural innovation capitalizes on disruption to restructure industry relationships. For example, innovators like Fidelity and Citigroup have used the deregulation of financial services to offer broader arrays of products and services to consumers under one umbrella. Nearly overnight, those companies became sophisticated competitors to old guard banks and insurance companies. The right team leader is the general manager, and the ideal sponsor is the CEO. The general manager can see the changes in the market or industry, the CEO, again, has the power to force the other stakeholders in the organization to accept the changes. Stage 8. The Fault Line There is no aligning innovation type in the model. The crucial question at this stage is, when do you reach the fault line? After the fault line, there is no innovation, only liquidation. And finally, stage nine, the end of life. It is only a question of when the product will no longer be produced. There are no good reasons to invest in the product or the service anymore. It is game over. Here is a quick summary of the three main phases of the model. The first main phase is about emerging markets getting the acceptance of a new product or service. This phase requires a very great 
and very changing, innovative effort. In the model, this phase is also called the technology adoption life cycle. This stems from the fact that Moore mainly has his knowledge from technology companies. But the model is based on the premise that high tech can be viewed as a microcosm of larger industrial trends. In the second main phase, the customers and users know the products and are generally satisfied. This phase is not so innovation heavy. It is about incremental innovation instead of radical innovation. In other words, doing better, not doing differently. To invest heavily in innovation in this phase is called overshooting. Overshooting has the effect of accelerating the commoditization of the product, thereby shortening the product's lifespan in the phase where the revenue growth in the market is highest. In other words, by investing heavily in innovation in this phase, you outperform your product before it is needed. In the third main phase, the customers are looking for alternatives. They are not satisfied with your product anymore. Now, you have to invest heavily in innovation. You have to reinvent yourself. It's a high-risk way but with the market nearing the fault line, reinvention is the only path forward. The alternative is for executives to call the game over, accept that the market is at the end of its life, and allow the company to be bought by investors who plan to focus on distributing rather than reinvesting the remaining free cash flow. In short, invest in innovation and take your chance of getting back to phase one, or being forced out by others. The life cycle model implies that enterprises must mutate their core competencies over time to sustain attractive returns. Product innovation skill, which serves a company wonderfully in a market's early stages, will not support Main Street, where new process management and marketing expertise are needed. But management's efforts to change direction are thwarted by the inertia that success creates. The deeper the enterprise is into the life cycle, and the more successful it has been, the greater its tendency to return to its former course. For most executive teams, battling the inertia demon is the biggest challenge they face. Sad to say, the demon usually wins. To overcome inertia, Management must introduce new types of innovation while deconstructing old processes and organizations. The different phases require various forms of power. Note how executive sponsorship migrates over the life cycle. During phase one, the early part of the market's development, innovation needs the general manager's attention. During phase two, the middle part of the market's life, innovation is sponsored at the vice president level. And during phase three, the end of the market's life, the company transforming innovations demand the full support of the CEO. In all phases, management has to aggressively extract resources from legacy processes and organizations and repurpose them to serve the innovation type or, if that's not possible, take them out of the company altogether. So management must pursue a twofold path of concurrent construction and deconstruction. For construction, the goal is to create the next generation of competitive advantage, so the focus should always be on the innovation team. Now, let us consider criticism of the model. The model does not take into account the environmental impact on the products or services. This could be about legislation or consumers' concerns about environmental issues. The model locks the individual stage together with a specific form of innovation. 
there may well be other options. The model discusses what position the team leader and executive sponsor must have in the organisation. There is no discussion about which human types are best suited for the different roles. There is no definition of when the product or service moves from one stage to the next. We see the transitions clearly when the product or service has gone through the entire life cycle. Here is one of the main reasons why the examples in the review of the model are older. The advantage of the model is that it indicates an ongoing movement and the management must allocate resources to various forms of innovation. The company must be ready for change.